Good evening. Welcome to worship this Ash Wednesday. Uh, my name is Emily Shipman. I'm one of the pastors here at University Lutheran Church, uh, which is very exciting to say. That's the first time I've said that. Uh, together with my husband, uh, pastor colleague, Pastor Zachariah, uh, we have just begun here. Uh, we've been here about eight days. So if I haven't met you yet, uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. And please tell us your name like eight times each. Uh, we'd really love to, to get to know you and your names. Uh, we are glad and very excited to be here with you. Interesting to begin uh, on Ash Wednesday and have this be the day of welcome. So do not let the somberness of this evening uh, impact the fact that we are glad to be here with you. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We read responsibly Psalm 51. I will read the uneven, and you will read the even verses. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be pure than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God. You will not despise. Let us pray. Holy God, on this Ash Wednesday, we reflect upon our sin our failings, and the harms we have caused. Remind us that although we are dust, we are also your children, and your love never fails. Give us perspective as we enter this Lenten season, and help us fashion a deeper relationship with you. Amen. We continue in song, Abide With Me. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Ash Wednesday is one of my favorite services of the year. I have a feeling I'm not alone in that, because each year I hear that from others as well. I'm sure it is the same here. This is my favorite service. I've asked why, and I've yet to really be given an answer. Nobody can really put their finger on why. What is it about tonight that causes it to resonate so deeply in my soul? All illusions are stripped bare. This is, might be a process getting used to this, won't it, Theo? All illusions stripped bare. We all carry around us this brokenness, and I appreciate the honesty of tonight that says, here it is. Here is the brokenness. We feel the weight of the brokenness within and around us. We stop tonight in all the chaos and busyness of our frantic lives. We stop and we sit in the truth that we are but dust. And to dust we will return. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Some of you have been following this process of Pastor Zach and I starting here and know that uh, I've had a recent fire in my life. October 6th, my family's lodge burned down. This is the fire as it raged and consumed while I slept, a state away. I was still living and serving in North Dakota, and this is in Minnesota. And I was blissfully unaware, no idea that the earth was shifting and everything was changing. Not one person was injured. There was only one person in the building and he was not injured. Thank you, God. It was terribly sad. But also so many pieces kept us saying, thank you, God. It happened 
A week after the lodge was filled with all these wounded warriors and their families, uh, a week earlier there had been three babies in the lodge, but there weren't. A week later, my family of four, my kids who may or may not be distracting during the service that are up here, we would have all been in there, but we weren't. Thank God no one was hurt. Still nothing was the same in the aftermath, and it was a kind of death as sort of sorts. Each time we went to reach for something or make plans for a gathering or try to work through some problem, it came to mind again. This next image is, that was the gathering image is of the smoke after the fire was put out. Long after five fire teams put out the fire, the ash continued its haunting presence. Ash suspended in the air, getting tracked into the house, discoloring the pillowcases, charring our conversations. It was everywhere. Isn't that the case with all the fires in our lives? Fires like this one that had no cruelty of cause, other fires that we experience, other scars, they chase us everywhere. Ash that clings to us and comes along to church and to school, ash that that you can taste and smell. Sometimes I stopped noticing it. I didn't even realize I was smelling it. It permeated everything. How many of the things we experience, the fires we face in our lives or deaths of countless varieties, passive sorrows and cruel intentional ones, do we carry around with us? Fire is so immense that the ash covers everything. It clings to our clothes, it gets caught in our nostrils, and it stains the chairs we sit in and we rest in, and it, it is this slow process for the ash to settle as it fills the air and covers everything. The cost of dealing with the debris endlessly shocking. Whatever the fire or chaos in our lives, the debris the impact of the debris is far and wide. Beloved by God, I don't know the stories we bring into this space together. Tonight, each one of us carries with us aches and scars and traces of ash that line the raw tears in our flesh. No one is immune. And we bring it all tonight. Ordinarily, our practice as a worshiping community in the ELCA is to gather and then very quickly after we gather, we confess that we are sinners. We admit that we've done wrong. And we receive forgiveness. We admit that we've done wrong, that we are not all that God intended us to be. Though created good, with good works prepared for us to do, we nonetheless bicker about who's the greatest, like the disciples were. We lie and betray and kill. We revel in and benefit from the million little deaths around us. And so often, even in all the false and real joy we experience, we nonetheless ache because we know we are not all God intended us to be. There is brokenness and suffering piled around us. It weighs like bags of cement on our shoulders if we have the guts to notice it or acknowledge it. You know this, church. You know this. It is what drew me to this congregation. Even those who are visiting, you know this. We all know. We have done wrong and are called to love bigger and deeper than we do. Each day, 
We are called to love bigger and deeper. I know this community knows this already because this community has difficult conversations and gathers around books that are honest about hard things. You host anti-racism workshops and don't sweep white privilege under the rug as if it hasn't afforded this church or campus or state existence in so many ways. We worship tonight and confess our sins on the original and ancestral homelands of the Anishinaabe Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwa, Ottawa, and Potawatomi peoples. You know, church, that it isn't right that the church is whiter than the country we live in, even as the prison systems are blacker and browner than the country. I know you know big love is needed because you open your doors to people who strive for a better grasp of English so they can navigate this dream that they're working for in hopes of escaping a nightmare. We are a church that tries not to be blind to war and famine and injustice and all the things that displace peoples that displaced even our beloved Christ Jesus and the things that displace Christ still today. The world is not healthy, and we know it. This is why we gather here today. We ache and our aching needs outlet. In reflection and song, in yarn and quilts woven and sewn in love, in hats shared to warm any who shiver with the chill of suffering, is it enough? We want to help. We want change. We ache for change. You are active for change because you know deep in your bones that things are not as they should be. You know at your core, I reckon, that God created the world good. God created the world good. And we ache for the healing of all creation, for goodness to be nurtured and experienced and celebrated. We ache for an end to campus shootings, an end to sexual assault and abuse and neglect and bigotry and racism and mass incarceration because creation is intended to be good. And it feels off when it is not. It hurts, it bruises and wounds and suffocates and torments and causes one to toss and turn in the night when things are not good. We are created to exist in relationship, and these relationships need all sorts of healing. And we yearn to participate in the healing of the nations. Lent is an opportunity to put all that stubborn energy that we all know we have, we're all stubborn, Lent is an opportunity to put that stubbornness toward loving in the way that God calls us to love. Leaning into the transformation that God calls us to. Jesus modeled it for us. Jesus shrugged off the cultural judgments of the day and loved people no matter what it took. No false accusations, no false privilege awarded. Jesus knelt to heal and drew lines in the sand to stop mobs throwing stones. Jesus flipped tables of corruption. Jesus ate with shunned ones and touched forbidden ones and spoke truth to power fearlessly. This is the one that we follow. We see in Christ Jesus, the light of the world, what love incarnate looks like. This is love. In Christ we see And we are called to go forth everywhere you go and be light. Not be salvation. Be light. 
that helps people to see salvation is from God who is good and loving. And when it's not good and loving, then it is not of God. And when we aren't good and loving, then we are not participating in what God is working toward within us and around us and throughout the world. Welcome to Lent. The season of Lent is about stepping up. Historically, it is a time of deep commitment to God's message in the cross. It is a time to saddle up alongside Christ and dig in to take this seriously. It's going to be a long journey from here. I can't begin to tell you the long days that have been had since that fire, and there's still so much ahead. And there will be a lot of change along the way. There's no way around it. Lent also demands of us change, transformation, not just a wardrobe change. For God to do the most beautiful work, Jesus Christ turned his face to the cross and aimed each step forward in that direction in this unwavering commitment to do what it takes to make God's love known. And we are invited to do the same. In Lent, we are invited to fix our eyes on the cross and face each step body, mind, and soul committed to doing this for real. Not so that 40 days or six weeks later we can return to normal. We all know there's no return to normal. We commit now for the sake of transformation, that tomorrow might be different than today, that 40 days in we won't recognize ourselves from today because the transformation that God has worked in us has been so great. God, do a new work in us that we may participate in the healing of the nations. That is our prayer. Sisters and brothers, today we name our brokenness not to wallow, but for the sake of this transformation. You are dust. You are dust. All is dust. It will not last forever. This form, this way, how things are, will not last forever. In some ways it's sad. But also, thank God. Resurrection dawn is coming. I wonder if maybe the deep yearning for Ash Wednesday is the visibility of our shared faith, that mark of ash on our foreheads, allows us to look around and see this visible reminder that speaks through the groaning and the aching, you know too. I see that cross on your forehead, you know too. You know it's not supposed to be like this. I am not alone in knowing deep down that something is wrong, it is off. We all see it. I'm not crazy. It is wrong how things are, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. That is what the Ashen Cross says. We all know things aren't how they are intended to be, and if we all know, then maybe we can work together toward a new tomorrow. And if we're all participating, then maybe... It's not so unreachable. Maybe there is hope. Maybe that spark of hope within me is not naivete, but the defiant core that refuses to give in to despair and knows that God can heal this. God can heal even this. And maybe I can take part. In Lent, we stand up against passive compliance and commit to disciplines so that even when we lose sight of the possibility that we can participate in overcoming injustice and healing divisions, even when we're overwhelmed by the sheer state of devastation and brokenness, we hold on to these practices that we've committed to because God can make a way 
where there is no way. And God can give sight to the blind and God can transform dust and ashes to new life. And God can breathe life into weary bones. God can breathe life where it was thought no life was possible. And this very same God is in you. And nothing else is as important. It's all dust. Amen. for brokenness hope for despair Lord in the suffering this is our prayer bread for the children justice joy peace sunrise to sunset your kingdom increase God of the poor friend of the weak give us compassion we pray melt our cold hearts let tears fall like rain come change our from cruel wars haven from fear cities for sanctuary freedoms to share peace to the killing fields scorched earth to green Christ for the bitterness his cross Make us content with the 
Lighten our darkness, breathe on this flame until your justice burns brightly again, until the nations learn of your ways, seek your salvation and bring you Thank you. That was lovely. Maybe you've never done a Lenten practice before, so we're going to talk a little bit about that during our service tonight. So the season of Lent begins tonight, and it goes through Easter. Um, and there are lots of ways for us to deepen our relationship with God during this month. Uh, some of you maybe have like given up chocolate before, maybe? Anybody? Okay, uh, so uh, maybe that has deep spiritual meaning for you, and great. Uh, but the importance and the reason for like fasting or taking something on, the point of this is to uh, take time to work on your relationship with God. Okay, so this isn't meant to be a, I'm going to lose 20 pounds during Lent. <laughs> that's not, that's not, shouldn't be the focus here. Okay, so... If you don't have ideas of how you might do that, uh, we have some things written in your bulletin to try and maybe guide this time. Uh, so if you look in your bulletin, there's this thing called an invitation to Lent. And under there, there are three different things you could think about maybe doing. Okay, the first one is, uh, I'm called to self-examination and to turn from the things that draw me away from God. Uh, if you take some time to think about that, I might, I'm might i sure you might be able to come up with some things that uh, you could maybe stop doing for a time and instead spend time with God in prayer or reading scripture or something else. So that's one thing we can do. We can stop doing those things and make space for God. The second one is about actually intentionally spending time in prayer with God. Um, so you can just allocate 10, 15 minutes in the morning before I get on my phone, I'm going to pray for my friends. Or I'm going to pray through the prayer list here at University Lutheran Church. I'm going to pray for the people I love. Making time for that. The third one on there is I'm called to love other people. Maybe, maybe fasting from stuff sounds boring. Okay, great. How about you go and do something instead? Some people are um, invigorated by action. So instead, take something on instead of giving something up. Uh, make sure to compliment eight people every day uh, and make sure it's you focusing on the image of God in that person. Take something on. Okay? Uh, if you have I want ideas, there's this handy little orange sheet. On one side is you can read through the New Testament during Lent. There's a little check sheet. Uh, it's got... Uh, 
Sunday is your day of rest and or your catch-up day, and then the rest of the days you can take some time to read through the New Testament. On the opposite side, maybe you don't know how to pray, uh, and that's okay. On here, this is like a choose-your-own-adventure prayer. Okay, There's a bunch of different... Uh, you can start it with these words on there, or choose your own. You can praise God, so take a minute to say thanks to God. Praise, praise God for who God is. To say sorry for things that you've done. Uh, to give thanks for what God has done. To ask for help on the things you need help with. Uh, and to end your prayer. So this is kind of a little prayer cheat sheet if you don't know what to do. Uh, also, we love having conversations about this. So come talk to us if you don't know how to do it or you want help or have questions. We love that. Uh, also, our, we're going to have Lenten services on Wednesdays at noon. And we are going to be preaching on some topics in this book, which is beautiful. This book is called The Celebration of Discipline by Richard J. Foster. In this book, there are lots of different spiritual practices that you can work on or try during Lent. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that uh, during this Lenten season, again, to focus on this being a time to deepen our relationship with God. And there are ways to do that that have been used throughout the centuries within the church um, that are explained in this book, and it's great. There's also a workbook. If you're a workbook person, you can get a workbook with it too. So at this time, we're just going to have a moment. I want you to just think critically about those three things in your bulletin or something else I've said. And if you want to write in your bulletin something you're going to commit to doing this Lenten season, we're going to make some space just to ponder and do that. So I invite you into this space to ponder and think. Psalm 32, we'll read each verse responsively. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity. While I keep silence, my body wastes away. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. Then I acknowledge my sin to you. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. I invite you to rise as you so desire. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. 
We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. I invite you to join in singing, Our Father, we have wandered. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll have imposition of ashes if you'd like to come forward. We'll have two stations here. Uh, and we will come forward and put ashes on your forehead uh, as you so desire.
At this time, we will have our offering. We invite our ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts 
that we have gathered, that all the people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. I invite you to hear the story of good news. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. Lord, remember us in love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is now ready and all are welcome at this table. Just a few words of instruction and information. The bread is gluten-free. There are wine and uh, grape juice as options. If you'll come forward at the usher's guiding, uh, we'll have two stations, I believe, if we have enough helpers. Uh, I think we do. Uh, you can come forward, receive bread, and then you'll receive an empty cup. And then there are different chalices, the clear or the white grape juice is grape juice, uh, and the darker liquid is wine, and just go to one of the stations and they'll pour you a cup. Uh, all are welcome here. What Jesus Christ has done for we who are dust uh, is to love us, and that includes you. So please, I invite our communion helpers to come forward, and then we will have the rest of you come.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor. Pray for those in need. Fast for the self-indulgent. And above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to sing, O Master, let me walk with thee. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.